Yo, this man has been calling himself the chef for over 20 years with zero culinary experience, and we accepted that shit. That is so goddamn gangster. What's going on, everybody? It's the granddad of granddad, Wooly, and you are here again for another edition of Wooly Reviews, Hip Hop Data. Today, we got an album review today. We're going to be talking about the brand new album from one of the most known, famed, legendary members of the Wu-Tang Clan. This nigga's back. He got some new shit, and it's some fly, international, luxurious art. That's, that's the name of the album. Fly, international, luxurious art. Fila for short. But it's, it's, that's the name of the shit from Raekwon. Now, for those who don't know who Raekwon the Chef is, like I said, he's the member of the Wu-Tang Clan. Probably the second most consistent member out right now next to Ghostface Killer who is just ahead of all of them with album releases. It's probably going to be a new Ghostface Killer album by the time I finish this goddamn review. I bet it is. But we're talking about Raekwon right now. And this is the follow-up to his album Shaolin vs. Wu-Tang that came out a few years back. And this album was actually supposed to come out a few times but kept getting pushed back due to delays and other reasons. But now it's finally here. So let's talk about the shit. Now when I first put on this album and gave it a listen, I quickly realized that the sound of this album really lends to the title. It sounds like some fly, international, luxurious art type shit. It. The production is real flashy and sort of leans towards the mainstream type sound. It's not your traditional Wu-Tang sound that we know and love. Not on here. He really did go with that, I guess, concept of it sounding like some fly, international, luxurious art type shit. Now, he's got a list of producers on here that are pretty good. He's got Scram Jones. He's got S1, you know, Scoop DeVille, and a few other people who I've never heard of, such as, hold on, because I can't remember motherfuckers' names, Jerry Wanda, Blue Rocks, and Matthew Burnett. I've never heard of those motherfuckers, but they got beats on here too. And the overall production on here is okay. I really didn't find any beats here that I found were like super great or just got me real excited. The production was sort of just like, eh, you know, for the most part. It was not terrible, but it wasn't great. It didn't really like, nothing jumped out at me. But there were some decent beats and they fit Raekwon. Now when it comes to Raekwon, he gives you what he always gives you. He gives you either some fly shit or some gangster shit or some fly gangster shit. And that's all he has on this whole entire album. It's 13 tracks, and he's pretty much just saying the same things in different variations on each song. He's either talking about how fly his shit is, how gangster he is, or telling a story that's sort of gangster or sort of fly. Or he blends it together. And that's pretty much what you get in most Raekwon albums. So he really didn't change up his formula. Only thing that really probably changed up is the overall sound of this album as opposed to like Shaolin vs. Wu-Tang or Only Built for Cuban Links or anything like that that he's known for doing. He really just went with more of a modern, I guess, sound. But even that it is going towards the more modern sound, the beats do sound a bit dated. It sounds like, you know, this album was made a few years back, which it probably did. And since it was pushed back so far, now that it's out now, these beats sound probably a little bit, you know, 2011, 2012-ish and not 2015-ish. If you listen to it, you know what I mean. But for the most part, it's a decent, you know, sounding album. It's just nothing that's really going to grab you or catch your attention. And as far as Raekwon is concerned, he just sticks to his normal formula. He gives you some good bars. He gives you some good subject matter as far as what he's used to talking about. And he doesn't go far left. So as long as you don't expect him to try anything really new or out of his comfort zone, he's going to give you what he usually gives you. And you should be satisfied on a lyrical standpoint. Now, another thing that was really hit and miss for me on this album was the features on here. Now, some of them actually worked and some of them didn't work so much. But he's got everybody from Ghostface Killer to Busta Rhymes to French Montana, to 2 Chains, to Rick Ross, to Estelle, and there's a lot of other motherfuckers on there too. Just look at the track list that's on there. But some of them actually help, some of them actually don't do anything for the song, and some actually pull the song down. So it really just depends on the song, but I just feel like there were a little bit too many features on here, and a little bit too many features that kind of sort of play to trying to, I guess, get some mainstream appeal to it, and it just didn't work for the song. And I felt like Ray should have, you know, probably got some more members of the Wu on here instead. It was only Ghostface Killer from the Wu-Tang on here. Everybody else was just outside features, and most of them were like, I guess, at the time that these songs were being recorded, were niggas that was hot right now. That's why you got ASAP Rocky and 2 Chains, and then he had Ross. You know, he had guys who probably were at the time that they were recording, because I'm not sure if these songs were recorded, you know, soon or actually a few years ago, but around that realm, it seems like this is when he had capitalized on these features, and it just seems like, as of now, it didn't really work, and it didn't really just, it didn't go over as well as probably it should have on the album for me. But on the flip side, there are some tracks on here with features that I did enjoy, and it actually did boost up the song. So now I gotta give him a top five tracks, as I always do, and let me get it, because I'm fucking never ready for this shit, why do I even not ever, okay, here we go, fuck, here we are. 
Four in the Morning featuring Ghostface Killer. And then we got 1212 featuring Snoop Dogg. And then Live to Die. And then Reverie, parentheses Wraith, whatever the fuck that means. Uh, featuring Ghostface Killer and Rick Ross. And then Nautilus. So those are my top five tracks. And out of those, I would say my favorite track as far as on an energy and a hip-hop standpoint had to be 1212. And that one's produced by Scoop DeVille and it features Snoop Dogg. And I like the uh, the vibe of that. It's got the nice scratches and it's got the 012, 012. And it's got, you, you okay, it sounds stupid when I say it, but when you hear it, it sounds fucking dope. But anyway, and then Snoop Dogg comes with a really, really good verse. He kind of gives you that old school Snoop that we like, you know, not, you know, when he's just real cool laid back, that West Coast vibe. I like that. And then Raekwon comes in with some solid verses. He's got a part on there where I like, he says, I got a million dollar hand like I'm playing poker, you know. Well, I got million dollar hands like I'm playing for. He says some shit like that. And then Snoop says it's really, it's not even really lyrical, which is cool how he says it, but he says, you can catch me on Sunset Boulevard. No harm, no foul, no bodyguard. But the way he says this shit is just fucking dope. I can't do this shit because I'm not them, but just trust me on that shit. But that's my favorite, favorite track probably on this whole album. And then the next one after that, I would probably have to say would be, um... I would say Nautilus. I like the beat on there. It's real dark. It's really even probably one of the closest beats to those dark, gritty Wu Tang tracks. And it's just Raekwon doing what he does, talking that gangster, grimy, fly shit. And then you got Reverie, Wraith, or whatever that is. And that features Ghostface Killer and Rick Ross. And that's where we get a little bit of the Ragu, the Ray and Ghost United vibe. And that's really good. And then Rick Ross comes with a solid verse, but it's sort of like a forgettable type. You know, it's just like a Rick Ross verse, but it's nothing that really stood out. But really, you do get a better chemistry on this track with Gray and Ghost rather than the Four in the Morning track, which is actually the opening track. But that's still a decent track, too. But those are my top five tracks. I like them all. But for the most part, this album is just pretty good. It's decent. It's not the best Raekwon album. There's way, way better Raekwon albums that he's made. And for the fact that this was pushed back for so long... It's kind of a letdown because I thought it would have been a lot better with all the time he had. Maybe he recorded this and it just because of other reasons, it just got pushed back and he held on to these songs. But I feel like we get what we usually get from Raekwon. There's nothing wrong on the lyricism front. The production is just a little hit and miss and so are the features. Like I could do without the French Montana feature on wall to wall. The hook is just not for me and his verse is just blah. And the same thing with 2 Chains, his verse and... It's just like, and then some of the hooks on here are a little bit, you know, and eh too. But for the most part, it's an okay album. I didn't really hate it, but I didn't love it. It's I'm just in the middle on it. I'm just like, it's, it's a cool album. So, I mean, if you're a Wu-Tang fan, Raekwon does deliver his parts. And it may not be the classic Wu-Tang vibe that you love to get. But it's a decent album and you'll get a couple good songs out of it for the most part. You may not feel with fuck with some of the features or some of the production on here, but there is something that you will like and I do guarantee that. So my final verdict, I'm not saying that Raekwon Fly International Luxurious Art is an overall okay decent album, but could have been better. All I'm saying is that Raekwon delivers what he's known for. He gives you that fly gangster shit and he always brings the good lyricism. But on the flip side, the production is just okay. Some beats are a little bit better than others, but there's nothing that really jumped out at me. And the features are all iffy. You get some good features like the feature from Busta Rhymes and the feature from uh, Ghostface Killer. But then on the flip side, you also get the two chains and the French Montana feature that are just sort of like letdowns. But for the most part, this is a pretty good album. I'm enjoying, you know, you know, the fact that the Wu-Tang is trying to keep things going with these solo projects. You know, you got Ghost doing his thing, you got Ray doing his thing. So just keep putting shit out and you're going to still get some quality work. But, you know, we hold Wu-Tang on a higher pedestal because they're fucking Wu-Tang. But this is a decent album. Not the best of Ray's discography, but it's okay. So for me, I have to say that Raekwon Fly International Luxurious Art is not granddad approved, but I will give it. A granddad recommend it. So definitely go check it out. It's out right now. You can buy it everywhere or you can just listen to it somewhere. But, you know, just check it out. If you're a fan of Raekwon, you'll get something out of this album. And I got nothing more to say. Raekwon, Fly International Luxurious Art. Fila for short. It's granddad recommend it. Flip it. All right, guys, it's going to do it for today's video. Make sure you give me a thumbs up and drop a comment. Tell me what you think of Raekwon Fly International Luxurious Art slash Fila. If you've heard it, if you haven't heard it, like I said, it's a good album. Not the best of his discography, but you get some tracks out of there. But some things are a little hit and miss. Previous video was on the side as well as my music video. Check those out. Show them some love. And as always, Twitter, Facebook, SoundCloud, Instagram. Links in the description below. And subscribe. Button on the screen. Button below. Wooly Reviews. 
twice a week, gaming channel, check that out. Videos Monday through Friday and they're hilarious. How can you not want to watch that shit? And that's all I got to say. So until next time I take my leave, granddaughter, Raekwon, fly international luxurious art. It's good, but eh, I wish it was better. But it's pretty good. I'm out of here.